In this video, we're going to be going over the 10 most fun overclocks for the Scout class in Deep Rock Galactic. Now, this isn't going to be in any particular order, as well as fun is an extremely subjective term. So if you would like to disagree with me and place any of these anywhere else, or if you would like to add other ones to the list, feel free to. Number 10 is Triforce Volley. This is an unstable overclock for the crossbow that allows you to fire out three bolts at the same time. Now, this one can be pretty fun, mostly in the way that you wish to use it. You can essentially just use this like a shotgun if you would like to get very, very good effect out of it. Just get really close to something big and then shoot it with all three of these. That deals really, really high damage, even more so if you want to take the electric bolts in tier 1 and you wanted to put the magnetic shafts in tier 5 onto your crossbow. Then you'll do massive damage to anything, as well as if you put two electric bolts on anything big, it is not moving very far from you. So it is very easy to do massive damage with this. But another thing that is very fun is to try to shoot this at very long range and try to hit three separate enemies, since the further away enemies are, or at least the further away you are from enemies, the more and more spread your Trifork is going to have, as well as you do have to compensate for the natural fall of the bolts that the crossbow has. Coming in at number 9, we have another crossbow overclock, and this is Bodkin Points. This is one of my absolute favorite overclocks in the game, probably my favorite overclock for the crossbow. And this one is just so much fun. This gives you bouncy bolts for the crossbow. This is another unstable overclock that makes it so I believe you have a slower reload and you also have less damage per bolt. However, that's not such a big deal because every bolt can bounce two times. And that is really cool. If you stack damage with this, it can one-shot grunts on any difficulty. It also can do surprisingly well against big enemies as well and some of the more dangerous enemies like slashers and guards because the crossbow has an extremely high chance of stunning enemies. So even if you hit three separate enemies and you don't actually kill any of them, there's a very high chance that you're going to stun all of them, assuming you didn't manage to hit like three oppressors in the face or something like that. This one is also pretty strong if you want to combine it with some of your special bolts, like if you want to do the electric bolts, so that way it's extremely easy to hit your primary bolts, since if you take magnetic shafts and something's electrocuted, you fire this near it and it will hit and then bounce to other nearby enemies. The pathing has also gotten better on Bodkin Points ever since it was added, because when Bodkin Points was first added, its pathing was kind of janky, didn't always work, and sometimes slammed into walls doesn't do that as often now, it does try to target enemies that it has a clear line of sight to to bounce to, so that's pretty nice. Coming in at our number 8 spot, we have Hover Clock. This is an overclock for the M1000. This one is a very fun and very simple overclock, this is a clean overclock that doesn't actually change any of your stats with the M1000, it just makes it so that you can float with the M1000 whenever you use a focus shot in midair. So you can do this from any height, and this will completely reset your fall, which is extremely useful if you wish to use this from jumping off of high surfaces, like Scout really likes to climb up. So you can jump off of something, use your sight, and then you don't even need to shoot it. You can just hold it, and this does linger for a little while, and then you'll drop. On top of that though, if you get a kill when you're using your focused hover shot, you can then use another hover shot and float. Sometimes this works even more so when you're playing multiplayer for some reason, usually if you're not being the host. I've only ever seen it when people have joined my lobbies, to where Hover Clock just keeps working for the M1000 even on normal shots, and for like a really long time, I don't know why that is, but it is really cool when it does happen. Coming in at number 7, we have Overclocked Firing Mechanism for the GK2. This one is really simple, gives you a higher rate of fire, and it gives you more recoil. I really like stacking this with all rate of fire with the GK2. It is a little bit difficult to control, and you can run through ammo with this fairly fast, but the rate of fire is awesome and you can just spray down just about anything with it. It is a super fun overclock and probably one of my favorites for the GK2. Coming in at number 6, we have a classic one here. This is Hipster. Hipster just makes it so your M1000 becomes a spam fire machine. You can shoot your M1000 super, super fast. Can deal decent damage per second. Actually, it does really high damage per second. And it also helps that this is probably just one of Scout's best overclocks in the game. You get a ridiculous amount of value out of this. A ton of bullets, really high damage, fast spam fire. You can reload cancel this to have even more DPS that you can follow up faster with it. And it pairs well with just anything. It's a really cool overclock. Then at number five, we have Impact Deflection. Impact Deflection is for the Drag Plasma Carbine, and this gives you Bouncy Plasma. That's all it does. And it's pretty strong for that. This one used to be a clean, now it's a balanced overclock that also reduces your rate of fire before it didn't actually have any downside to it. Even with the reduced rate of fire, the drag still shoots fairly fast. And if you put Plasma Splash on this from your tier 4, it is really, really strong at crowd control, especially small enemies like Swarmers and like Jellyfish. Because every one shot has a chance of hitting, splashing, then bouncing somewhere else, hitting and splashing again. So you can do potentially a lot of damage, especially if you're shooting right underneath enemies or right at the bottom of enemies where it's hitting them in the legs, bouncing up and hitting them in the chest or face, and then it's splashing each of those times too. You can actually clear up crowds really quick with this one. Coming in at number four, we have aggressive venting for the track. This one is a super fun overclock. So what aggressive venting does is whenever you overheat your drag, whether that be completely overheating it by just building up the heat all the way or by manually heat dumping it, 
then you will deal damage to everything around you, burning everything around you, and scaring everything around you, which is very useful. This is 5 meters in every direction around you, so that includes behind you, above you, and below you. So you can light a whole bunch of things on fire, and if you take something like Hot Feet with this, it is very useful because every time you overheat it, then you can move around faster. It's also really good if you want to take IFGs and throw these down to slow everything down and then burn everything. It's actually really ammo efficient too. It clears up crowds very well. It doesn't do the greatest against big enemies and doesn't really help you against really big enemies like Dreadnoughts. Coming in at our number three spot, we have the brand new Double Barrel. Double Barrel has been completely overhauled since it was last season, where instead of a clean overclock, it is now an unstable overclock, and it lets you do massive damage to everything directly in front of the shotgun. It does make it so your shotgun is less accurate, and you still have to fire out both barrels every time you want to shoot this but it completely destroys swarms and it really smacks big things really, really hard. So even if you're up against suppressors, Praetorians, whatever it might be, you can hit them really effectively with this. It's a very cool overclock now and probably one of my favorites for the double barrel. Coming in at our number two spot, we have Cryo Minelets for the Zukovs. These ones are very fun too. These ones work similar to other Minelets where if you put blowthrough rounds on them, you can actually shoot through enemies and stick them to the ground below and then these will erupt, building up everything's frost meter or building up everything's cold meter so that you can freeze things with it, which is very useful. It's not super great against really large enemies unless you have other people that are also also bringing cryo stuff, whether that be a cryo cannon or maybe cryo bolts with the crossbow, but it is really, really strong against crowds. And it can be pretty strong against some of the bigger enemies like Praetorians. You don't usually want to use it against really large enemies like detonators though, just because of the amount of ammo you're going to have to use and it's usually just not worth it. And cryo minelets pair actually really well with any of your primary weapons because if you can freeze things then you can deal extra damage to them, which is great for just saving ammo with your primary weapons. And it can synergize really well with other overclocks like Bolts of Mercy if you want to go with a really heavy hitting build like that. And then our number one spot, this one's probably no surprise to anybody, this is Special Powder. Special Powder for the Boomstick is just super fun. Fun. It makes it so that you can fly around with your boomstick. So you jump up into the air, you fire the boomstick, and you'll fly in the opposite direction in which you fired, which is usually either straight up or flying backward. Flying backward can be really useful for getting to extra places, and flying upward can be useful in kind of two ways. One is to actually, you know, get up to any place that you need to up above which you can always switch to your grappling hook to get to a better spot. The other bonus to this is that if you're falling down, you can also shoot this at the ground to slow your fall a little bit. And sometimes you can completely negate it if you do it at the right times, which can be very useful as well, not taking any fall damage. So these are my 10 most fun overclocks for the scout class. Tell me what your 10 are down in the comments below or which ones you've enjoyed so far. There's actually a lot of really fun ones for Scout. I'd really be interested to hear that. Thank you guys so very much for watching this. If you'd like to see more videos like this, I have one on Gunner. Be sure to click on this playlist right over here. And uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.